Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching. Today we're doing a station rigs. We are in Dolphin County. We're at uh, Millersburg Fire Company and we're going to talk about their Truck 20. So the first one we're going to run into is one of their assistant chiefs. This is Sean Grimm. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. Thanks for inviting us out. Absolutely. We're glad so, to have you. Truck 20. Tell us all about it. So Truck 20 is a 1997 Sutton. It's a 70 plus foot ladder. Add the bucket on there. It's about 75 foot, really. OK. Um, but uh, this has a uh, 1500 gallon per minute pump, hail pump on there, 300 gallons tank on here. So we can have enough water to get ourselves in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Just enough to get it uh, cooled down That's and keep right. working. You get a head start on things before the cavalry comes. All right. So this truck is not a new truck no. compared to some of the ones that we've already seen on the channel. This one's a little bit older. What do you have on the inside? You mind if I open sure. the door and take Absolutely. a look? Absolutely. Come on in. How here. does it run? So it's, it's a diesel engine. Diesel engine, Detroit diesel okay. engine, and uh, very simple operation. Uh, we just have our switches right here. It's going to get noisy. Push button start. Push button start. Yeah. Now, how do you put this into pump gear? Pump gear is very simple, uh, just like pretty much any other engine that you would have. Obviously, we have our parking brake on, uh, put our transmission into neutral. We just have our flip switch up here, back into there, put her in drive, and we're ready to start pumping. All right, simple enough. It's one of the old school kind, right. very reliable, yep. ready to go. You got it. All right. Do you mind if we sure. walk around the truck Absolutely. and see what's going on? Let's take a look. All right. So how many does this seat in the cab? We have six seats in here. Okay. Uh, if we open this up, we'll see we have two rear facing and two side facing. Okay. That's the first time I've seen the side facing one. It's a little bit of a unique setup there. And uh, if you're not a fan of watching terrain go by as we're speeding down the road, right. it can be a little disorienting. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, it's a little tight, but little you tight. got, it looks like Scott packs in yep. there. We have, uh, these are the older packs. Uh, these are the Scott G2 packs. So okay. these were the very first that had the uh, quick connects on there. Um, we are actually switching over. We actually just signed a contract with Drager. Okay. Um, so we are going to be, these are going to be gone pretty soon. Okay. Um, these are at the end of their life and uh, we're going with new ones. Gotcha. And it looks like every seat gets a radio. They every got seat. hand lights. Yep. And you have an AED on board. Yep. We have an AED per NFPA. Every piece of apparatus is required to have an AED on. That's for our safety. Right. More so than responding to a med call. Okay. I don't really go on med calls with the truck unless we would happen to be out in it for something else. Right. But, right. Uh, but we're always looking after each other too. Right. So yep. got to have that on there. Yep. So, All right. Working our way around to the back. Now this one, it's not, is it a mid mount? Is that how you yes. describe it? This is a mid mount. Uh, this is technically a ladder tower. Okay. Because the ladder is a ladder. Uh, if you look at an aerial scope, that's more of a tower ladder. Right. Because the ladder going up is more of an escape ladder, more so than for climbing up and down and doing work. Okay. Um, this can function as both, so okay. it's a ladder tower. But yeah, mid mount. Um, we have our outrigger jacks here. Okay. This is very Outriggers quick. Outriggers are down low. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is very quick to set up. It's a scissor jack system. Um, so if you would go on the other side, you'll see the outrigger on that side is not in the exact same spot it is over here. It's offset a little bit because they'll scissor out. Okay. To okay. Come down. Now we did a tower uh, for station six out of West Whiteland. Okay. They had riggers on front and back. This one only has it middle. Yep. This is just the, the mid mount jack. If we had a, a tandem axle truck, we would probably have the H style jacks that come out. Right. Uh, like most, you know, Seagrave, Pierce. Um, E1 has something similar to this, uh, but I believe they still have a, a single H jack in the back. Okay. I'm not sure 100% on This that. is nice and quick. You can get it into yep. service really, really quick. About 30 seconds and we're ready to rock and roll. Wow. Yep. Where are the control panels? Are the they control up Control panels we oh. have up here. Okay. Um, so whenever the operator is coming out to operate the apparatus, we pull this tray out here. Okay. Uh, we don't want to be operating standing here like this with right. the ladder up uh, for some safety reasons. If you get a uh, shock, sure. runs into wires, yeah. uh, I am now the ground <laughs> and I will not be here much longer after right. that. <laughs> so that just pulls out? Yeah, you, pull, you just pull this out here like so. Okay. And then uh, the operator can stand up top here. Right. And then we have our controls uh, for the ladder 
up here. An There's intercom also, system to go up top? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's it's very much like Charlie Brown's teacher. Okay. Says, wah, 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 wah. Better use our radio. Just use the radio. Gotcha. Yep. Um, but it is there if you need it. Okay. Um, but uh, very similar controls, the same as here, is also in the bucket. Uh, so once I flip the bucket power and upper power, okay, controls available in the bucket, and then this overrides them. So if they get in trouble up there or lose control for whatever reason, I can take over right here. Okay. And keep okay. going. Yep. Nice little pump panel here. You got all your gauges. Yep. Uh, easy to read. Yep. And uh, you got your flow meters, all your tank all the, fills and everything like that. All the normal goodies that you'll find on a on an engine pump. Okay. Um, so technically that makes this really a quint. Okay. Because um, it does have the pump capability, the tank, the ladder, the whole nine yards like that. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a very simple system. Pretty much once you learn one pump, they're all the same. It's just a matter of layout where things are. Right, so. right. All right, what's in the next cabinet back here? Next cabinet back here, we have Engineers basically the, you know, the pump driver operator compartment, all your adapters, Ys, all that good stuff. Spare section to five inch, um, intercom system, water. And the most important part of the any apparatus that we have here is Pers TP. <laughs> Personal hygiene, yeah, I okay. gotcha, yeah. Just, just in case the, the need arises in the field, you're ready to go. Uh, we also carry detectors and alarms in our, our rigs too. Okay. Anyway, if we arrive on a scene and discover, you know, the, the homeowner doesn't have working detectors, we can give them one. Yeah, that's an awesome yeah. service to give back to you. Um, we also work with the moose um, and have packets like this on our rigs. Okay. So that way if we're on a crash or a fire and there's, you know, children involved. Right. It's a little something, you know, that, you know, they just had a traumatic experience. Right. This kind of helps out that a little bit. Right, so right. keep that in there as well. Okay. Bob, there you got a set of irons, I see. Set of irons up there. Nice and easy to yep. grab and get to. Try and make do with the space we have on a smaller truck like this. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, the tandem axle, it's got a lot more space. Right. Um, in here, we have a carousel with spare cylinders on. Okay, that's so pretty this, cool to have uh, as a carousel versus, you know, the yep. little cubbies that we've had in all yep. different size. Yep, so that, that once we get our new packs, we'll have to come up with a different scenario here because we're getting 45 minute cylinders. So they're gonna be a little bigger. bit wider, yeah, yeah. Yep, but we have our uh, RIT pack up here. Um, that's got an hour long cylinder in there, various connections. That way, if we have a down firefighter, right. hopefully never. <laughs> but we are prepared for that okay. eventuality. A lot of different tarps for salvage operations, try and keep people's property as protected as much as we can. Right. More water, of course, there's bolt cutters in the back. Pretty so much that everything makes... that you need. The fact that, you know, firemen and fire companies take the time out of their stocking their truck to put tarps on yep. to protect your stuff. Yes, That's your right. house has just been through a traumatic thing, but us tracking from the front door to where the fire mm -hmm. is, yep. we can bring a lot of dirt and debris in there. Yep. So you guys, you know, thinking ahead and say, you know what, I don't need to destroy all their carpeting. That's it. We're going to take care of the, the business at yep. hand. We're going to try and do no further harm for anyone who's an EMS knows that do no further harm yeah. mantra. We try and kind of go by the same okay. uh, viewpoint there to keep the damage to a minimum. Gotcha. So. This next compartment is basically just a bunch of tools, hand tools. Um, these trays just pull out. Yeah. Nice organized. I like yep. how they're nice and secured up there. Yep. We have more hand tools, just your smaller hand tools, hammers, screwdrivers, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, there's a um, kit back there to help with you know replacing holes in roofs. So if we have to ventilate through the roof, okay. we have the tarps, we have some other materials that we can patch that up at least to keep the rain from coming in there. Okay. So while you're waiting maybe for a Bell Ford to come out or a Serve Pro to come right. out to service it, you guys yep. are actually taking that extra step and yep. doing that for Yeah, we can at least do a little bit of something to keep the damage to a minimum. Okay. Um, rope equipment, uh, all our different, you know, pulleys and beaners and all that kind of good stuff, rope and res rope rescue equipment, ladder belts for folks that need to go into the, the bucket to yep. do work. Easy enough. Manifold, uh, one of our SOPs is that on a working fire, we lay out, uh, this comes out and this gets hooked directly to the hydrant right away. 
That way we can add on if we need to. Right, that's a good thing to have. All too often we hook up initially, maybe we go right from the hydrant to the truck, Right. and then you were stuck. We have to either turn it down, put something on. Yep, Putting it. that in an SOG is a good idea. Yep, so that's policy we pull up. That's one of the first things that comes out. Very cool. Yep. So for being a tower or ladder truck or whatever mm -hmm. we're calling this, it actually seems very short as far yep. as the body's concerned. Yep, it's got a good uh, short wheelbase. Uh, we can get this pretty much anywhere. We yep. can go down to little alleys and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, right. We do a lot of driver training with our drivers before they're certified to go out and drive emergency calls and operate. Okay. So that's part of it. Last compartment on this side, we have our extinguishers, uh, an edge protector for rope. Uh, we have class three uh, harnesses in here. Okay. Uh, we have a pre-rigged four to one haul system. Okay. And then we have a Cleveland system uh, for if we have uh, to lift anyone off a building with the Stokes basket. Right, right. That attaches to all four sides, gets hooked to the four to one on our anchor points there. Okay. And then you can manipulate the basket to work on the patient. Right. Um, you can tilt it that way if the patient is in danger of aspirating, you can turn them to their side so they're not, they don't choke on it. And it's all pre-set up in those bags, you know exactly up. what's going on. Yep. Looks like you have A, B, C, and a chem. Yep, so we have, we actually have an AFFF foam okay. extinguisher. We have our dry chem ABC cylinder, and we have regular PW, can, water, whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, a lot of different places say it differently, so. Okay. All right, out back. And this is like a lot of business back here. A lot of business back here. We'll start right here and then move to the bucket. Okay. Uh, we have con compartment just for wet dry vac. Yeah. Again, that goes with the salvage aspect of things, making sure we kind of clean up messes if we can. And I want to say it one more time. That goes back to the community. You're not just yep. thinking about, oh, the job I need to put the fire out and right. smash windows and all that kind of stuff. You're thinking, I want to make sure I'm yep. protecting my stuff. Because yep. one day it could be my house. Right. And you want to make sure you're cleaning up after yourself. And especially in a smaller community like this where it's tight knit, everybody knows everybody. Right that customer service aspect goes a long way. Yeah, good point. Down here we have a variety of different things. Uh, we have an ash bucket back there where we kind of keep uh, what we call chimney bombs. It's yeah. just a bag with dry chem in there. You can drop down the chimney. Uh, we also have our rods for chimney brushes back there for chimney fires. Yeah. Uh, battery powered fan, positive pressure fan there. Some people call it a smoke ejector. Smoke ejector, yeah. <laughs> lots of different lots of different terms yeah. as folks in the fire service know. Yeah. Uh, we have a cutter's edge saw, partner saw, circular saw there, right. cones in the back. So for some of the other people that have been watching, we've talked about K-12 saws, we talked about regular chainsaws, that's essentially yep. what those are. Yeah, it's basically K-12, it's the partner yeah. version of it. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so that's that compartment. All right. Uh, we'll swing around and then okay. catch the bucket here. As you can see here, we have two nozzles, one on either side. We have a fog. Nice. And we have a straight okay. string nozzle there. Right, so you can do a water curtain on one side if you need to, and then come back and yep. do a, a, a straight blast to put, out a, to put down the fire. And now, there, you can control either side. So if you just want one side to go, you can do one side okay. or the other, or you can do both at the same time. Wow, that's cool. So we have some value. We also have up on top of this one, you'll see there's a small inch and three quarter line coming off a Y valve. Right. So if we're up doing work in, a, in an attic or up in the roof somewhere, we just need a little bit of water, we find a hot spot, we just turn that on and take That's that That's thinking. In there. That's thinking. So you load this, you got to get on this before it goes up. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We don't, unfortunately, it's not Star Trek yet. No transporters to beam us in there. Okay. Right? okay. Unfortunately. Right. Uh, but this is still easier than climbing the ladder straight sticks. Right. Right. So right. We do have our elevator. So this step comes down to make it a little bit easier to climb up in here. Yeah. And then you just push down and push in. And we have our bucket. And the fact that it pushes in is more of a safety feature than anything, because once you're in there, you don't want yeah. it pushing out, right? Yep. The only problem with this, with the suffins I've noticed, is the space in here is really limited. Okay. <laughs> um, and when you push this in and you have to try and get around that door, Okay. Um, you'll see a lot of the newer apparatus have corner doors. Right. It's a little bit easier. Okay. So. But once again, what but, year was uh, this made? This is a 97. Yeah, so, so they're making yep. upgrades and, and Improvements yep. as Even they go along. Even upgraded things, so. Yeah, yeah. But it's been working, it's been working well for right. you. 
Yep. So on the side are all your ladder, I yep. see. Uh, we do have pike poles that come out the back. We have three that, or there's three supposed to be. We're actually missing one. Okay. Uh, we were at a fire recently and kind of disappeared. So they we're checking to around leave with our mutual aid partners <laughs> to see if they might have it, but there's top and then bottom here. It'll show up. Yep. Back compartment here. This is just an electric cord reel. Got to have power. Yep, Got to be able to see. Yep. yep. So that's all that's in there. Okay. Another really boring compartment here. This is just our generator. That's a huge generator, it is though. A huge, and it's an old generator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things massive. You know, the, the generators now are like about a third of that size. Right. Right. And but you'll get plenty of power out yep. for those lights. Now you are you're using the battery power smoke ejector. Yes. But you can hook up another person's yes. smoke ejector if you need and to. And even that one, that has, a, if you run out of battery power, it has an, a, an adapter on there you can plug in okay. to AC. Okay. Yep. Cylinder container here. Uh, it's just the one here in the wheel well. Yeah. A lot of people I'm sure have seen that. Yeah, that's been a, 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 a fairly new, newer design. Yeah. They're putting them on both sides of vehicles now yep. to try to, yeah, you know, you, utilize as much If you look space at our engine there. on the other side here, you oh, can yeah, see yeah. you have one on either side of the wheel well. This one, they couldn't, there's stuff in there. Okay. <laughs> that they couldn't do that. Uh, this compartment here, we have more saws. Okay. Another cutter's edge on the bottom, regular old husk, uh, steel uh, chainsaw, regular old chainsaw okay. in there. Now, I almost said Husqvarna because that's what was in there. No, uh, it's orange, so it kind of looks like steel. it. <laughs> um, so you talked about the different saws. Yes. You, you call that one a. This is a cutter's edge. Cut also be a roof saw okay. so this is what we would use to cut a, a, a ventilation hole in the roof that's going to go through the tar paper the shingles any kind of other roofing materials that are up there okay this will kind of you could do that with this one but it's probably going to bog down with the the barbs on the chain there so okay okay all right and above this you have all your ladders yep most of our ladders are here okay uh, we do have a full nfpa complement of the ladders for a quint yeah okay or a the or a truck um, does this come down or yep. how do you get so this? the operation here is there's one on the front one on the back yeah this just pulls out pulls out <laughs> okay kind of put it off to the side and then you can pull your ladder okay. straight out so it doesn't tilt or anything nope. to come out but it they're easy enough to get to right. once you get that unless down. you're a short person how does it this keep one it? gets to be a challenge if you're a little, <laughs> a little we do have vertically challenged uh, okay so you could use that to get them gotcha to so how does it keep it from sliding from front to back then um these have pegs in the back yep. so they'll just push in okay and then once this is in place line up oh. it just kind of pushes in very like smart it. yeah in place there. Ever so. lost a ladder? Never lost a ladder. Yeah. Then it's working perfect. Now that I just said that. <laughs> Let's knock on yeah. something. We'll talk to Murphy about that one now. But right? yeah, we carry 35, 24, 216, 14. That's a folding ladder too, so you can use it as an A-frame. Okay. We have a 10-foot attic ladder up in the actual uh, aerial part. Right. And then we have a... Uh, little giant? Little giant. That's okay. the term I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think that goes out to 22 feet. Gotcha. Okay. Now, what are you running as far as hose here? Hose lines here. We have two pre-connected inch and three quarters, about 150 feet. And then we have a three inch pre-connect. And you can see we got a big nozzle up top. Right, for right. Big water for big fire. Okay. Another set of irons. Another set of irons ready to go. Yeah. A couple of poles, axe on the side. This compartment here, all this is is just chimney brushes for the yeah, clean it up. rods there for taking care of the chimneys. We actually just, in my township, had a chimney fire that lit the yeah. whole house, so. Doesn't take much. You get yeah. a little bit of Especially extension. Especially this time of year. It's, you know, January, everybody's running them, so. This is kind of just a miscellaneous compartment just to put stuff in that doesn't fit right. anywhere else. Yeah, you need your road flares. You need your bottle Light. jacks and yep. stuff like that. Bring us back around to the other side which is pretty much identical pretty much to the, the other thing. side. Uh, we do have a little first aid kit behind those vests there. Okay. And that's just for us, you know, that's not a major BLS kit or anything like that. That's just for our protection. Okay. All right. So that's uh, in there. In the captain's seat, what do you have up here? You guys do not run MDCs or computers. Correct. You're all radio dispatch, is radio that correct? Radio dispatch. Now we do have an iPad uh, okay. for our truck and the engine. Okay. And uh, so we have, you know, we get uh, active 911 here. 
Uh, so we will get our dispatches on our phones and then the iPad there, so we'll at least have the information on there. Okay. We can't communicate back that you know we're responding or on scene or anything like that. We still do the radio. Okay. Uh, communication for that, but uh, that is in there as a resource for us. Uh, we do have. Uh, I was going to say, do you want to hop up in there? I'll hop in the other side, and I can pull out. Yeah, stuff. let's do that. All right. Yeah. I'll show you what's up in there. So up here we have uh, our Knox box key. Uh, so this allows us to get into certain buildings with this key here to access master keys and whatnot without having to wake up uh, the key holders at two o'clock in the morning. Okay, is that through county dispatch that gets the Knox uh, box to open? Or? No, we actually have codes that we put on there, but we do communicate okay. with county saying we've released the Knox box key or it's secured. Right, right, okay. Um, but the, the businesses that we have them set up, we show them how it works to give them a little bit of ease to know that we're not just going to come in there and use it for whatever. Right, right. It's only for emergencies. And it, it saves the businesses. If you think right. about the Knoxbox keys, you know, if you don't have that, you're going to have to break a window. You're going to have to break a door. Yep, you, you got know, it. By having a business, you know, contribute to that and actually get a Knoxbox is actually going to save them in the long yep. run. Yep. We have a five gas meter back here. A little Drager. Nice and tiny. Yep. I like that. And we have our Drager. Sound like a Drager commercial here pretty directly, <laughs> but we have our Drager thermal imaging camera. Okay. That's up here. Some people also know it as just a tick. Yep, tick for short. That's all charged up up here. Now that I'm kind of in here, can you show us how the lights and sirens get turned on up sure here? Sure can. i uh, tell you what, let me, uh, do you want me to pull out or do you want me to light them up right here? Yeah, let's pull it out. Okay, we can do that. All right. Going to a call for safety first. We can put seat belts on. All right. That is our SOP here that seat belts are on before we go anywhere. Like the big orange strap across the front, you know right. it's ready to go. <laughs> yep. Uh, newer pieces of apparatus have the red seat belts. You can see it better, especially when you have air packs. Right. They kind of blend in this way. So we did this for the time being. Okay. Uh, we're going to fire it up. So that beeping that we just heard, that's the air pumps yep. getting up the uh, air brakes and stuff, right? Yep, you got it. Um, our controls are on the side here. Okay. Um, so we're gonna open up the door. Master emergency lights are on. Okay, and that flips on all the lights around. Yep, we can do individuals, but we have them all turned on. So all we gotta do is hit the master. Easy enough. And we're uh, set and ready to go. Okay. Once the door's open there, we'll pull out. Push button drive. Push button transmission over here. Okay. You got it. And then uh, foot pedal. And we have our. Sean, this truck is no joke. Thank you for doing that for Pretty us. Sweet, huh? you know, hopefully the viewers continue to like so. it. You have a unique thing up front here also. Yes. So you can see as it says knock knock. This is one of our forcible entry tools. Uh, just an aluminum battering ram that we have on here. We have actually used this once uh, for uh, the patient that was kind of stuck inside their house just across the street across, above the bank here. Right. And just use this to pop the I see that open. a lot on SWAT. I don't see that a whole lot on a fire truck. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, so that's it's there. Um, ready to go if we need to but tilt over this cab. is one of the coolest trucks i've seen in a long time yep. i appreciate you inviting us out sure to thing. take a look at it you know hopefully Glad the viewers have. enjoyed it hopefully so yeah once again this is the station rigs with heroes next door thank you all for watching do us a favor hit that subscribe hit that notification and share these videos so we can keep growing one last thing we talked about merch we do have a website now watch heroesnextdoor.com check it out we got some pretty cool stuff showing up I just Thank bought you all one. for watching. <laughs> all right. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay.